you all remember Project TL? This Project TL, you know, the one that looked like a lineage version of Lost Ark and was announced all the way back in 2017. That Project TL? Well, we now have a name for this game and it's gone through some more changes, it looks like. So this game, published by NCSoft, is going to be Throne and Liberty. And it's got some interesting quirks that'll potentially make it stand apart from other MMOs that are on the horizon. Throne and Liberty is an upcoming MMO for the PC and console coming out soon, sometime, maybe. We don't have a launch date. We don't have a launch estimate, but we do have a live blog announcement and trailer. So what is Throne of Liberty? Well, Throne of Liberty sounds like it's going to be the spiritual successor to Lineage 2, a game I played years ago, but not to the near extent of other MMOs. Throne of Liberty was announced in a dev blog on ncsoft.com. According to the blog, this game stemmed from Lineage, but it became its own IP about three years ago. Changes made to the game systems to make it up to date with current gaming trends alongside a story rewrite had the team asking if the game should be called Lineage. This is a good step, in my opinion. Two of my favorite games of all time, EverQuest and EverQuest 2, really couldn't be more different. They exist in the same world, but they could have been completely different IPs. The lore was a little convoluted in the connections, but beyond that, the gameplay was so incredibly different that the crossover from EverQuest 1 players to EverQuest 2 players was fragmented. EverQuest 2 was made in the same model as World of Warcraft with more, I will not say action combat, because it's not action combat, but more spammy combat than EverQuest had, and more of a focus as the game progressed on solo play. I still remember going into Nectulos Forest in EverQuest 2 and not being able to kill anything. And then, subsequently, not very long later, they removed all the group mobs in that. And you couldn't split mobs anymore because they were linked together. A lot of things that made EverQuest EverQuest were not present in EverQuest 2. It was a good game. I enjoyed it. I played it for about four to five years and I had fun with it. It had some incredible things about it, like the betrayal quests which were one of the coolest things I've ever seen done in a game. But it was still a very different game from its original predecessor. And in this case, it looks like Project TL is going potentially the way that EverQuest 2 might have needed to go. Its own IP, its own brand. So, we'll But we'll have to see how this works out because I know there's a lot of people that were excited for a Lineage 3. But this begs the question of whether an MO should ever have a sequel especially long-running MMOs that have sometimes convoluted lore through multiple expansions. But that's a question for another video. This video, we're talking about Project TL, Throne and Liberty, and what we have, what information we have so far. So let's get into that. When asked what makes Throne and Liberty different from the original IP, they answered that it was what PC and console-based MMO games should represent. I want to highlight this part specifically because with NCSoft, and honestly, a lot of developers, Mobile has taken a bigger market share in recent years because it's been so damn profitable. Hearing those words, PC and console, is heartening. They went on to talk about how they wanted to avoid monotonous play, which may be music to some people's ears, or perhaps a bit of a disappointment to anyone who enjoyed the grind in Lineage 2. Specific examples they gave were about how players might encounter new mobs over time, how the wind direction may change the flow of battle, and how weather can impact geographical features. This sounds like immersive gameplay to me, and if it's done well and not gimmicky, I'm excited to see how they approach it. In the blog, this was referred to as three factors interacting. The field, environment, and the player, all interacting and affecting one another. But what is Throne of Liberty. Well, we already know that it's an MMO that's going to be coming out on PC and console. There was no mention of mobile, but there was something else in the blog about what the major content of the game is going to be. Specifically, the worldview needs to be solid and robust, so the team has worked diligently on storytelling. What was interesting here to me is they mentioned that they looked at tools and technique used in console and adventure games. More and more, I've been seeing what I'd call set pieces in MMOs, and it's something I'm loving seeing, honestly. It adds a different dynamic to the games, little cinematics or timed events. This could be as simple as the chase scene in Wrath of the Lich King, 
where Arthas chases you down to your eventual rescue, or as in-depth as the boss fight in Lost Ark's King's Tomb. MMO lore is very important to me, and it's probably a large part of why New World failed to grab me. I actually really enjoyed New World's combat, but the world felt hollow. It sounds like with Project TL, or Throne in Liberty, they're putting that story and world as one of the first major pillars of the game. The second part of the major content for this game is challenge. And coming from NCSoft, what they were saying here was very exciting to me. They mentioned that historically they have focused on competition between players, but in Project TL, they wanted to add challenge for players to work together to overcome challenges like boss fight. They state that players can overcome the challenge only when working together with other players grasping the characteristics and skills of each boss and fully utilizing their abilities. Yes, thank you. As a, as a long time MMO player who fell in love with these social driven challenges of overcoming obstacles with other players and working towards common goals in games like EverQuest, EverQuest 2, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy 14, etc, etc. This is so fitting for the genre in my opinion. This is what I think brings, like, has created some of the best memories for me. Now don't get me wrong, I adore PvP. I want some of my I really enjoyed for me personally going into battlegrounds in World of Warcraft. Really the only thing I, I miss currently, but World of Warcraft is battlegrounds and arena. But the friendships I made were not made on a PvP battleground. You when I was being, you know, when people were were telling me, you know, what they um plan to do with my you know, and and then and how they were gonna and then, and then, and then, and you know, that wasn't friendship building for me. But when raiding or grouping with other players, when working towards common goals with other players, that is where I made deep connections. Connections with friendships that I continue to this day. That always made me feel part of something special. And to many of you watching, I feel you probably feel the same way. The interview circled back to immersion and coming off my video on the HDRP part two in Pantheon, which you can find in the card above, this felt very fitting. They were keen to explain that things like weather and day and night cycles will impact you. For example, they talked about how the strength of the wind could affect archery at the shooting range, or that if you practice lightning type magic when it rains, it affects a wider range of enemies. It's not just this impact though. If you're in the middle of a siege, you may under normal circumstances be able to access it through the sewers. But if it rains too heavily, those passages could be blocked by water. There's interactivity as well. As a player, you can cause a solar eclipse or a rainstorm. Now, I don't know if this is something that will be implemented, but these last two pieces put together, imagine being able to bring about a rainstorm during a siege to protect your city. This just sounds badass to me. I like this a lot, the interactivity. It reminds me a little bit of a much more enhanced version of the Druid spell in EverQuest where you could make it rain. Speaking of liking and interactivity, did you know that that button down below, if you click it, will make things happen? Like cool stuff like this and this and this. Look at you, the viewer, affecting the video. Okay, yeah, so that's obviously all bullshit. And you're not actually like, you know, making a change here or interacting. But if you do like the video, please consider leaving that like because it does help this video out. And I'm going to give this a little shot here and try and do the like call at the beginning instead of the end when most of you have left and I cry later looking at the metrics. Hi. But let's move on to something that's really interesting that was announced in the blog and kind of new. I don't think I've ever seen this done before. There is a companion to Throne in Liberty. It's, a, it's something called Project E. So this is still shrouded in a lot more mystery than Project TL. But Project E is another game, but it's another game set in the same world. There will be two different continents and two different games. As you can see on screen, this map shows the difference in the world map. You have Project E and you have Project TL. I, I can't think of this ever happening before. Assuming Project E is its own standalone game and not a connected expansion, and even then assuming is it another MMO or is it a single player game? How is that going to play out? I'm, I'm, I couldn't find any information on that. I don't think we have enough information yet on Project E, but it looks very interesting. I don't see, it would be an interesting thing for NCSoft to try and make competing games in a sense, an MMO and an MMO. So if I were to make any kind of assumption here, I think I would probably say that Project E is going to be 
a single player game or something to that extent, because why would you make games that compete against each other? Why, why would you potentially split your player base that way? Who knows? They, I'm, I'm not, I'm not in their shoes, so maybe it'll work out if it is. The trailers we've seen for Project TL look incredible. It looks gorgeous, like black desert level of beauty. The combat looks exciting, fun, and fast paced. The animations are fantastic, and the fact that they demonstrated group play, PvE, and PvP in the trailer is fantastic. My worries aren't going to be about the game itself, but rather the monetization. The way they've talked about the game with different regions in mind is good, in my opinion. There's another game, and I apologize for bringing up the specter of this, because it's been mired in so much controversy, mostly due to its predecessor, Bless Online, but Bless Unleashed is another game that was gorgeous, had an engaging, exciting combat, but still fell pretty flat. It was a console game adapted to PC, and while it certainly has its fans, there's a lot of negative around it, including monetization. Only time will tell how Project TL, or rather Throne of Liberty, turns out, but they're doing some exciting things over at NCSoft, and I really want to see how they end up making two games into a single world. So this is definitely one that I'll be checking out when I get the opportunity. But will you? Let me know down in the comments. Does this sound interesting to you? Did you ever play Lineage or Lineage 2? I, I had some good memories in Lineage 2, but I didn't get very far. My name is Redbeard Flynn, I hope you have an excellent day, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.